All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome back. I'm Dan Haggerty, and this is In Depth, where we spend a little bit more time on stories, the ones that matter to you and this community. Email me at dan at wrl.com, and please join the conversation as we continue to discuss our kids and their mental health. I met with some kids and their parents and some professionals right here at WRAL to talk about mental health and suicide. And the timing of this isn't a coincidence. It was spurred by a tragedy when the boy on your screen, an eighth grader, just 13, died by suicide at his middle school in Wendell. We have last night's segment online. We discussed the difficulties families have finding care or getting an appointment with a therapist. You can find it in the in-depth section of the WRL website or look on the WRL YouTube channel. After the segment, I got this email from JC. He said, Dan, not to say mental health issues and awareness are not valid concerns, but to tie it in with that little boy's death and the pandemic seemed a little off to me. Ask Wake County School Administrators what they have to say about Austin Pendergrass and his bullying situation specifically. So I've gotten a few emails just like this, asserting some opinion about the school, and I get it. Austin's grieving mother said that her son was bullied. But we don't know any of the specifics or any of the details about what was going on in his life or in his mind. And we probably never will. I understand your desire to know more, that it may help in some way. But as a journalist, in this case, it's not responsible to investigate this family's tragedy in the media, and even less responsible to speculate about it. But we do know that bullying can be a contributing factor to these situations. And I had two kids in my group panel, a seventh grader and an eighth grader, who both talked about their experiences being bullied at school. If you tell, if you say something to a teacher or to the school, do you notice a change or does it seem to go nowhere? I once got bullied in third grade and my mom tried so many things, like she even talked to the principal and there was barely any change. When I was bullied through for like third grade through like fourth grade, um, me and my principal, we were really close so that I know that's not the case for everyone. Um, things. It took a while for things to change for me. They did change eventually. Okay, so one person saw a change, one person didn't see a change. Outcomes vary, vary. Each situation is unique and complex, and again, we're dealing with kids. And with schools, things have changed a lot since my generation was in school. Wake County, for instance, they track bullying. They have campaigns against it. They're expanding the Second Step program, which teaches kindness and managing emotions. They start in kindergarten. There's a tip line for bullying and guidelines to investigate it. And they interview educators to see what they think, what they are seeing. From 2020 to 2022, about one in three teachers in our state think bullying is a problem at their school. That said, that problem, bullying, isn't always public nowadays, is it? It can be hidden from schools and peers and parents on social media. The victims can be isolated. The bully can follow them home, be waiting for them when they wake up in the morning and glance over at their phone. You know, now that I mention it, why don't we talk about the elephone in the room? And this mental health report from the Child Mind Institute that considered more than a half dozen studies on smartphones and social media. It says when it comes to kids, there is also evidence that overuse has a negative impact on self-esteem and satisfaction with their lives. And this social media use is also linked to an increase in mental health problems, including anxiety, depression, and suicidality. Because you're seventh grade, you said? Yes. So are there people already that have their phones and social media accounts and all of that? Mm -hmm. Honestly, like 95% of, of the people I know have social media. And are they staring at their phones all day? Yes. <laughs> Just a quick side note for you. That little girl there, Lily, her mom was sitting right next to her. She is the head of mental health programs at Wake Met. She joined us there too. And Lily, her daughter, doesn't have social media. So the chief medical officer at one of the best hospitals in the country who specializes in behavioral and mental health doesn't let her daughter use social media. It's almost as if she recognizes something other people are ignoring. Oh, never mind. TikTok is really fun. Let me know what you think about all of this. Email me at dan at wral.com. Help me navigate this topic. You can always find me on social media. Just search Dan Haggerty. Yes, I am grasping the irony of that.
And the complexity of this issue is something I'm fully aware of and the need to have these conversations. Listen, in the past two days, I've had so many people share very personal hardships with me over email. I had someone call my desk today and tell me an agonizing story of their struggles with their daughter and mental health and finding them care. We need to face this. Calls of the National Suicide Prevention Line rose 45% after changing the number to 988 and all the publicity it got. You can look at that statistic a few different ways, but one thing is for sure, more people are opening up to help. 988 should be a number that everyone knows, as automatic as 911. Keep the emails coming. We'll continue this conversation tomorrow night, right here at seven o'clock.